Well, we've got more insight for you now on the deal to rescue First Republic Bank. J.P. Morgan Chase has agreed to buy the troubled bank's deposits and loans in a deal orchestrated by a key regulator, the U.S. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Time now to talk with Dick Bove. He's chief financial strategist at Odeon Capital. Dick, what do you think of this deal? Well, for J.P. Morgan, it's a grand slam home run. I mean, basically, uh, it's able to buy this bank uh, at, a, at a price whereby the assets are marked to market, which means that the FDIC is taking the loss on the mark to market uh, for, for those securities and loans, and JP Morgan is getting them at uh, you know their, their, their real value. As a result of that, JP Morgan, under purchase accounting rules, is going to be able to accrete the value of those loans back to par over a period of years. At minimum, JP Morgan will show $500 million in increased profits. Probability is it'll be a billion dollars in increased profits every year for the foreseeable future. In addition to which, because of the, again, secrecies of, uh, you know, purchase accounting, it'll take in a $2.7 billion profit up front which it will offset by some uh, operating costs over the, over a number of years. So, you know, I, it, it's really hard to imagine, you know, J.P. Morgan getting a better deal. Plus, because they were able to buy this thing, uh, I think the law was put in place in 1861 in the United States, which said that an American bank cannot own more than 10 percent of deposits in the country. J.P. Morgan now goes right through that limit without any difficulty. So, again, there are no negatives in this deal for J.P. Morgan. On the other hand, if you're a small bank, there is a very compelling negative. J.P. Morgan is refusing to honor the debt of uh, First Republic and the preferred shareholder holdings of First Republic. What that does to all of the other banks in the United States, which are not of J.P. Morgan's size, it makes it virtually impossible for them to maintain their ratings. It makes it extraordinarily difficult for them to raise money in the open market. It increases the ability of J.P. Morgan to wipe them out. So, so the net effect is, you know, it is very good for J.P. Morgan, maybe a lot less good for American banking. Okay, and we're just showing uh, uh, our viewers a screen that summarizes some of your views. The deal hurts every small U.S. bank, you believe. You've just gone over that. You also believe regulatory bodies may have caused this crisis in the first place. Why don't we talk about that? Well, I mean, the incompetence of the uh, financial regulators in the United States simply cannot be understated, all right? Uh, on one hand, you know, they have this, uh, you know, monetary side of the Federal Reserve, which basically has made the statement that, uh, you know, interest rates are going to go up because they got to kill inflation. What they don't, and, and, they, and they think, and they keep arguing that they are data dependent. What they lack is a vision of what their actions do beyond their data dependency. And that lack of vision made it impossible for them to see that they were they were harming every bank in the United States. They were recreating the SNL crisis. How did they do that? When they increase interest rates, they're forcing the cost of money up for banks in terms of what they have to pay for deposits. While the money costs are going up, the value of the assets of the banks is going down. Everything which is fixed income in nature, whether it's the treasuries they own or the fixed rate mortgages that they own or the auto loans or the student loans, all those things are going down in value. So at some point, you cross the two lines. What you're finding is you've driven the cost of gathering funds to a level at which the yield on the existing assets cannot pay for it. And that poor, that forces, as it was the case in the SNL crisis and is the case today, that forces banks out of business. You know, we've had three major banks go out with roughly a half a trillion dollars in assets in a two-month period. Someone has got to understand that that's a systemic crisis. The other problem that you have with the uh, with the uh, regulators, w which is you know unbelievable incompetency. You know, if if you go back, by the way, to the to the problem in 2007, 2008, you know, Congress came out with a report in 2011, and you know the the result of the report was that one of the key causes of the collapse in banking was the failure of the regulators to do their job. When the guy 
who comes from Harvard or Stanford or what have you, or McGill, you know, writes the, the report on, uh, you know, what happened in this crisis, they're going to say the same thing. Why? Because the uh, FDIC never sent the regulators into their banks and warned them what the impact would be on their balance sheets if the Federal Reserve continued to do what it was doing. And by the way, the Federal Reserve itself failed to heed those warnings because the real book value of the Federal Reserve in the United States is negative $1 trillion. And in the fourth quarter of uh, 2022, the Federal Reserve lost $15 billion. So, you know, you've got that problem. And then you've got the further problem, which is that, you know, bank statements in the United States do not tell you what the assets and the equity is or are for American banks. Because of the accounting rules, they're able to avoid marking to market their assets and therefore their equity, and therefore they are overstating their equity. So now you've got a situation where, you know, mid-sized banks, you know, probably are going to have a lot of difficulty raising money at reasonable cost because of what J.P. Morgan got, N number one. Number two, you know, you know that the balance sheet of these companies are not accurate in telling you what is in those balance sheets. And number three, you know that the regulators are going to be really slammed by Congress, number one, for doing this deal. you got to believe that Congress is going to take a close look and ask, why are you giving J.P. Morgan $500 million minimum, $500 million in profits at the same time as you're causing, it, you're causing difficulty for small banks to raise money? And by the way, you're going to increase the FDIC premium on all the banks so that $500 million in profit you're giving J.P. Morgan is going to be paid for by all of the smaller banks who J.P. Morgan has just put in a position where they're having trouble raising money. So the whole accounting situation in banking in the United States has got to be revised. <laughs> That's my song and dance. It's, it's great for J.P. Morgan. Not great for American banking, and anyone who thinks that this is a one-time event is not thinking about the SNL crisis because this is the SNL crisis. Okay, we're almost okay. out of time. There's a lot of concern among uh, investors and portfolio managers these days about tightening credit standards in the United States. A reluctance of banks, the smaller regionals in particular, to lend to their uh, clients and therefore support growth in the U.S. economy. Do you believe the uh, the U.S. regionals will be uh, for a lengthy period? at a time less willing or less able to lend. Absolutely. I think that they're actually calling their customers now, saying to their customer, your bank loan, you know, comes up, you know, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months from now. Think about finding another place to get that money because we may not be able to roll it over for you. We may not be able to roll it over because we cannot afford to pay for the deposits because they're rolling out of the bank. We are going to have difficulty in getting uh, loans at reasonable cost. We're not going to be able to raise equity at reasonable reasonable cost. So our only response to protect ourselves is we've got to shrink our balance sheets. And unfortunately, you've been a great customer for the last 20 years. We love doing business with you, but we may not have the money to roll over your loan. And that is going to have an impact on the U.S. economy.